name's Jed, and I retired here to the beautiful kingdom of Thailand five years ago. Come and join me as I take you on a journey to discover the best that the land of smiles has to offer. Whether you're an expat, thinking of opening a business or working here in Thailand, or if you're a digital nomad looking to work in a more economical country than your own country, or if you're a holiday maker and you're wanting to know the best places to visit in this beautiful, diverse country, or maybe you're like me, a retiree looking for a better and cheaper place to spend your retirement during your golden years, well, if that's the case, you've come to the right channel. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. It will help me a lot and I promise it will cost you nothing. And push the thumbs up button and pass on the link to any friends or family who you think might be interested in looking at my channel. Okay, I'm back in Koh Samui, uh, just uh, stopping off for a, a little bit of a break on the way back from Krabi and Phuket. I thought I'd call back in again, have a couple of days, hour and hour, and I'm glad I did. Um, wow, things have changed. I've only been away a couple of weeks since I did the uh, pros and cons of Koh Samui, and uh, it's picked up no end. Um, it's a long weekend here. It's uh, uh, the king. King 10 uh, of Thailand, it's his birthday today and it's a public holiday and the whole weekend, I think it's two or three days they get holiday for the King's birthday. They have that many holidays here in uh, Thailand, I think they have more holidays, public holidays than they have work days sometimes because it seems to be every other week it's uh, some kind of holiday, a Buddhist holiday or King's birthday holiday or Songkran, always something. Uh, but look at this, I'll just show you this. Um, if you look back on the video when I was doing the pros and cons, uh, all this was closed up, there was only the bar open, well now they've got all these chairs out here. They've also put in some boats for rental and uh, jet skis uh, from this stall here. So it's really starting to, to get busy. Now then it's busy now because it's the holiday and it's mainly Thai people. Uh, I came over on the ferry yesterday and the ferry was absolutely packed and I thought, wow, what's happened here? Uh, just jam full of Thai people. Uh, coming over in trucks and vans and cars and motorbikes. It was chock-a-block. Uh, the car deck was full. There was no room for any other cars on there. No problem with motorbike. They'll always squeeze an extra motorbike on there, but it was full. And I was suppose I saw about 10 expats, but the rest were all Thais uh, coming here to celebrate the uh, the long weekend. Maybe driven down from Bangkok or driven from Krabi or Phuket or somewhere like that uh, to have a bit of a break, have a, something different to do, different town. Uh, so yeah, it's great. Uh, I wasn't going to do any video, that's why I never did a video on the ferry. I normally do a video of the ferry. I didn't do one, I thought, nah, I'm just going to come here and relax for a few days, but uh, because it is uh, so busy, if you look over there, uh, they've got all new chairs there. I'm, this is where I'm staying, I'm staying in Lamai Inn. And really, I think I should have known uh, when I went to book my hotel. I went to book my hotel uh, where I stayed last time, uh, the Ompai Luxury Resort, but I like it there. Uh, I looked at this one first and it was 900 baht a night, sorry, 820 baht a night. Um, and I thought, oh, maybe I can get on pie for about five or six. Anyway, I went to on pie uh, on Vicky.com and uh, they're full. So I looked at a lot more and many ones that I looked at before were full, uh, but I could just manage to get a room here for 800 and 
20 baht for the night. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very good, uh, right on the beach. My room is behind the other side, but uh, the beach ones will be maybe a couple of thousand baht a night for uh, having this beach view. Uh, and I don't like paying too much uh, for a hotel room, so I've just got the cheapest one I could, but it's still very nice and uh, very relaxing. So that's it, I'm back in Samui. I keep saying I won't be back for a while, but uh, uh, driving back from uh, Phuket yesterday, I thought, nah, I'm going to go to Samui for a few days and unwind, relax. Uh, there's a catamaran that you can rent here now. Frenchman owns that, I saw it here. It's been here for oh, a couple of years, just sitting there with a sign on saying for rent, but I've never seen it go out. But here it goes now with uh, a lot of people on there. He takes people out and uh, you pay by the hour, I don't know how much, but uh, if you want to go out, <laughs> sail around the bay, nice way to do it. And uh, I said before when I was here and I went up there and I said, oh, this isn't rented. Well, it's still not rented, but the tattoo shop has opened up again. So all this has happened in a, just a couple of weeks of me leaving here. It seems to have changed. Let's see if they've um, cleaned the pool up when I came here last time. The pool was uh, full of algae and green and horrible, but now maybe with it being a holiday and with them opening up the bamboo tattoo. No, still green and algae. <laughs> Never mind, maybe they'll get round to it again. Yeah, so yeah, I'm happy things are, are picking up. Some of these starting to get its mojo back a little bit. Uh, that's the Lamai Inn 99. And this was opened as a massage shop oh, two years ago before COVID, but now it's reopened. So if you're down this way and you feel like a massage, you can get a traditional Thai massage for 300 baht. All of them, 300, 300, 300, head and back shoulder massage for an hour for $12 Australian. Maybe $10 uh, US, I don't know. I'll put it up there, whatever the price is. But uh, yeah, it's starting to pick up. Everything seems to be going ahead. And uh, it's not the season now, it's off season. So lots of people on the beach, lots of umbrellas, lots of flags flying. Uh, yeah, I'm pleased with what I've seen. I'm glad I came back and looked at this. Can't believe this in just a few weeks. This was supposed to be a little bit of a holiday for me. I was coming back from Phuket and I thought I'd just stop here for two or three days and uh, unwind. Probably seems strange if you sat at home and uh, cold weather somewhere and thinking uh, oh you know you've got to go to Samui for a holiday from Phuket. It'd be a shame to drive past it and uh, not, not come and have a few days here. So I've had a rethink about uh, the next place to go to do the pros and cons. It was supposed to be Shumfon and uh, that's why I was heading next but I've been thinking about it and uh, I don't think it's that great a town for expats to live. Um, there are some live there because they're married to a Thai lady or have a Thai girlfriend who comes from the Shumpon area and they've decided to move there or they go there to visit family often. Uh, so it's, it, it does have some expats but not a lot. But it's not geared for expats like for restaurants. And, uh, it's geared for tourists on the uh, beach areas of Shumpon. Um, but still even that is great to visit but uh, they're not, for me, they're not great places to live like uh, perhaps other places like Phuket, Kabi, Samui, Wahin, Pattaya. Uh, Shumphon is not that type of town. So I'm going to give it a miss. If enough people contact me and say, oh no, don't give it a miss, I'm, I've been waiting on that one, then I might do it. I might go and stay there for a couple of days and do some uh, videoing and show you around. Uh, I've already done that. Not so long ago I stopped in Shumphon for uh, a couple of nights and did some videoing then. Uh, it wasn't the pros and cons, but I just showed you around, so you could always look back on that one. So I'm going to head straight to Wahin, I'm going to stay here for two or three days and uh, take in this beautiful scenery and uh, enjoy myself. Cocktail by Picks tonight, I think, and uh, then I'm uh, going to head for Wahin and I'll do the pros and cons of Wahin. Now then, while I'm here, as I say, this was supposed to be a holiday, I wasn't going to be doing any videoing. I thought, no, I'm, I, need to, I need to relax, not always be videoing, but uh, because I've seen such a change in it since I came here three weeks ago, um, then I think I should go and look at Shaweng and Bo Put and see if they're getting any better. Uh, maybe they're starting to open up a little bit. Last time I was there, they were not doing very well at all. 
Uh, but perhaps now, uh, things picking up this side of the island, perhaps uh, Shaweng might be picking up as well, uh, getting ready for the busy season in uh, November. So that's the plan. I'll do a little bit of video in here, not too much. Uh, it'll be a short video, uh, but it'll keep you updated. And then I'll head to Wahoon and I'll do the pros and cons of Wahoon. This is why I dislike jet skis and motor boats in the area. Um, they take over. People over there who just want to have a, a quiet swim are suddenly surrounded by all these boats and the noise. And it's dangerous. Especially in Thailand, maybe in countries like Australia where it's more policed and, and they give out good information and uh, make sure the person knows how to drive one. Uh, here, they don't really care. You, know, they, you, you pay your money and you take your chance. I've seen, you know, sort of eight-year-olds driving them and just getting out of control and falling off them. So, yeah, uh, over the years, uh, quite a, a number of people have died here in Thailand from uh, jet ski incidents and accidents. For me, I'd ban them or I'd put them out there somewhere, uh, away from the tourist beaches. If you want to go jet skiing, go to an area uh, which they should just um, make for jet skiers and people who want to use motorboats. Because this is a swimming area. Okay, I'm on my way to Shawen to check out to see what's, uh, what's happening in that town. See if it's the same as Lamai, it's picked up. any better than it was when I was here a few weeks ago. It's about 11 o'clock on the morning now. I'll take a drive through the street and then I'll uh, take a walk along the beach. Uh, a few more buses around uh, but there was a lot of buses on the ferry when I came across as well. So it's looking a bit better. This shopping centre over here is still closed. That was always busy but not anymore. hoping to see a lot of people uh, walking along here either heading for the beach or going for a late breakfast going shopping uh, but it looks pretty much the same as I was here last time no one walking the streets or very few people walking the streets Yeah, there's 
no one around and still many 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 shops closed many restaurants closed boarded up I'll take a little drive down to the beach I'll cut through this hotel and uh, head down to the beach and we'll have a little walk along the beach to see if it's uh, any better than it was last time. Morning. So many Thai people coming here uh, because it's the holiday, King's birthday, happy birthday King, I think he's in Germany, he spends most of his time there, right? uh, but there's still Thai people will celebrate uh, the opening of an envelope, um, so <laughs> they love their holidays, they, um, they celebrate most of the Christian holidays as well, they, even though they're Buddhist they celebrate Christmas and uh, two New Year's they have, they have Songkran and they have the uh, traditional January 1st uh, New Year as well so they don't, uh, they're not shy when it comes to having public holidays and uh, enjoying themselves this hotel looks busy so it is, yeah um, if I came through here three weeks ago, which I didn't but if I had, I'm sure I would have found all these chairs empty but look, there's a lot of people. Yes, look. Wow, Shawing's picked up. The street's not busy, but uh, Shawing Beach is very busy. Same as Lamai. Look at this. Yes, yeah, so many people. This is more busy than Lamai, actually. So I was wrong again. I'm always wrong. Uh, um, I thought uh, Lamai had taken over, but uh, Shu Wing's uh, making a fight of it. Uh, the two sister towns, which one's the, the busiest? And from what I see here, Shu Wing is winning. Uh, technical knockout, maybe. But yeah, this is, this is uh, a little bit like it used to be. And they're mainly Farang because any Thai people will probably be at a temple or sitting in the shade somewhere uh, they're not big on sun uh, the thing with Thai people is they don't like to get dark uh, they think if they look dark then they, um, uh, they're workers, they're peasants uh, because you, if you work in a rice field, in a paddy field um, that's when you get brown so they don't like to be brown, they're trying keep their skin white, they get creams and everything to try and uh, look white and then us all, all us Farang, we come here and we try to look brown <laughs> so, go figure but yeah look, and uh, over there they look like they've knocked one of the old hotels which must have been uh, derelict maybe for a couple of years because of Covid maybe it was too uh, hard to, to fix so it looks like they're building a new one yeah look Maybe things are going ahead. Maybe, just maybe, life's going to get better for the Thai people of Koh Samui. I do hope so because they've really had it tough for the last two and a half years. Uh, I think when Covid arrived they thought, oh yeah, a couple of weeks and it'll all be over. And uh, it's two and a half years. As long as there's no more problems, there's no more COVID, or this monkey box doesn't take off, or China doesn't invade Taiwan, or the recession, people people have money uh, at the moment. That's debatable if people have money, but there again, these people have money, they've come here. Yeah, fantastic. 
great to see good to see I'll go on now I'm gonna go to uh, Fisherman's Village uh, in uh, Bullput and I'm gonna have a look at that see if that's any better it'll be about 12 o'clock in the afternoon by the time I get there and uh, normally there'd be people out and about going for lunch going shopping going to the beach nearby going to Big Buddha and then going to Fisherman's Village which is close by so we'll go and have a look at that next I decided to take a quick stop at Chomong Beach just to check it out, see if it's any better from last time I was here. If you drive around the island, you can find lots of little beaches like this just out of the way, just to you know, just look out for little side roads take a quiet drive spend a day driving around the island looking out for little places and then the next day you can remember where they were and go back but this is better yeah um, umbrellas out there chairs out there a lot of higher boats jet skis as usual and uh, these will be higher boats as well these sailing boats uh, but they're for the, the more well-heeled uh, tourists not my type of tourism and yeah this is open again this was closed last time I was here as is this hotel down here you can walk around there there's uh, just on that little island there there's a little causeway there's a lovely hotel over there as well but this is always a, a lovely beach i like coming here because it's so quiet the water's so calm as well um, but no people uh, very few people doesn't mean to say they're not here then maybe they've gone to shiweng for the day don't want to stay here all the time uh, but maybe it's just quiet um, as I say these places do it more tougher than Shuwing and Lamai because they're off the beaten track people look at them on the map and think oh no it's too far from the nightlife or it's too far from uh, middle of Shuwing uh, but this town here is it's, it's a very nice town on its own uh, like a village I suppose uh, you'd call it rather than a town nice little quiet village if you fancy coming away for a, a quiet few days um, this would be a great little spot well, let's head to Fishman's Village. I might make a stop at Bowput as well. come here a little bit rocky and hurt your feet walking in the water but what I love about it is the view I come here and just sit and relax and uh, look at the beautiful uh, there's like a sandbank there but that over there is uh, Kofangen uh, about a 20 minute boat ride or an hour and a half ferry ride across be careful going down here oops 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 slippery shoes um, but I like about this is there's no hotels on the beach so you don't get lots of people you just get this secluded area to yourself most of the time uh, maybe you get one or two people on motorbikes coming out this way and stopping here and having lunch and bringing their food with them and having something to eat uh, but look at that look how beautiful that is that's very tropical looks like someone's set up some tables and chairs here so over there there's probably a restaurant and you can sit here and order your food and they'll bring it across to you that's going back to how it used to be a little while ago which is good uh, but before there'd be more tables and chairs uh, but as you can see there's no one here uh, because most people uh, uh, looks like they're sticking to the main towns of Lamai and Shiweng so let's head up to Fisherman's Village I only came here to relax but now I'm, I'm working this is my day job <laughs> back to YouTubing uh, but I want to do this today and then the next I'm going to stay another day and the next two days I'm not doing any video I'm going to sit and relax around the swimming pool or around the beach go out for something to eat and some drinks and maybe cocktail by pics and uh, I'm going to be like a tourist for a change instead of a YouTuber okay off we go Fisherman's Village so 
this is the entrance to Fisherman's Village and already I can see it's busy last time I come here there's no one around I can see all the motorbikes parked at the side of the road so this looks like it's picked up a lot but this has always been a very very busy area for tourists because of all the restaurants and bars not so much lady bars it's more your normal bars and restaurants now about 12 o'clock lunchtime so we'll go and take a look on the beach see what that's like so let's have a little walk through fisherman's village um, I've heard that the night market is back on now they used to do that pre-covid uh, every Friday between 5 and 11 uh, all along here there'd be market stalls always very busy and uh, I've heard that it's back I've never been back here on a, a Friday uh, to see it and I tend to t stay away from touristy traps like that anyway uh, you're gonna pay more in the markets here than you will if you go to the local market Let's have a walk along the beach and see if there's many tourists or people eating in the restaurants if you look back on a video I did last time I was here I came here and uh, most of the restaurants were empty and it looks like the same now if you look along the beach there there's nothing really happening same as last time I think most people come here night time for dinner uh, sometime for lunchtime if they're out and about or if it's maybe bad weather uh, you know if it's not sunny they come here for lunch a lot of the tourists uh, this is more for your farang tourists it's not your thai tourists they're not into this and it's they charge a lot um you know you you, you pay a lot more here in fisherman's village than you will in say uh, walking street lamai or walking street shawang a lot more expensive here uh, for food and dining so yeah uh, this isn't much different it seems to me that everyone's uh, congregating in the Shaweng Lamai area but uh, I suppose if I came back tonight I'd probably see a difference uh, but I won't be coming back but look at this look at beautiful uh, Kofangan over there very nice spot and there's loads of places like this you can just drive around the, the island and uh, you can find some fantastic secluded beaches is a popular place in the uh, late afternoon and evening but not so much in the daytime so that's it for now I'm gonna take a couple of days off and I'm gonna have the hour and hour that I promised myself when I got here uh, but as you can see uh, it's fantastic that uh, Koh Samui at last seems to be getting its mojo back and uh, I'm hoping for bigger and better things in uh, the end of the year November December January it's busy now I think because it's the European summer a lot of people have come over here to uh, after having all that time where they couldn't go anywhere because of Covid uh, a lot of people have come here for that still nowhere near as many as pre-Covid but it's a step in the right direction okay I'll see you in the next video if you haven't already done so please push the subscribe button thinking of retiring or living in Thailand please take a look at my book the retire in Thailand handbook the first six months you find it on Amazon it's crammed full of information to help you tiptoe the logistics of making Thailand your home in retirement thanks a lot for watching my channel so until next time stay safe keep smiling and I'll see you in the next video cheers for now